Hey, quick, quick gossiping. Go sit down. Gossip. Well, good evening. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church tonight. Let's all get a songbook stand and turn to page number 36. Page 36. It's good to be back in the Lord's house on this Sunday evening. Good to see y'all here tonight. And uh, let's do pray. Let's get the ushers to come receive our offering. And uh, as we pray, let's remember uh, Sister Beulah uh, in the hospital. They're still running some more tests on her. And uh, she seemed to be doing better today. And uh, so they're just trying to figure out exactly what's happening, how she's, if there's anything uh, going on. So let's pray for her that uh, the Lord will touch her. Amen. And I continue to pray for Brother Mike. God will touch him as he hopefully this week will be able to get out of rehab and get home and uh, things will start getting better for him. And I'm sure praying that God will continue to touch him, amen, and, and the Lord will help him. And so remember him tonight. And uh, also Brother Combs, remember him in prayer uh, that the Lord will meet the need there also in his life. And also remember spring, she got to go back uh, sometime first part of March, I believe it is, in, in uh, May, possibility looking at more surgery. So we need to remember her in prayer that God will meet the need there, amen. And uh, let's just pray for each other. Most of all, remember those that are lost, that God will deal with their hearts. And uh, just uh, thank him for what he has done, amen. Any other requests tonight that we need to remember? Martha wasn't feeling good. Amy was not feeling well. Patsy, she was not feeling well this morning. Chris wasn't feeling well this morning. So remember all these. We got. <clears throat> I know my wife's went to uh, the doctor Thursday. And, uh, the doctor was sick. The nurse was sick. So I mean, the, the physician needs to heal themselves. Amen. 
But anyway, a lot of things going around. I mean, it's just, I had this stuff in my head before I went on the trip, and it got cleared up, done good, went on trip, no problem. As soon as I stepped back on the shore, boom, it hit me again. And uh, so it's just crazy. But, uh, and then I see some of the trees budding out. So it's it's going to be here pretty soon. We'll all have it. Amen. Any others tonight? I'm glad to be able to be here tonight. I tell you that. I thank God for his blessings. Amen. Amen. So let's just pray for the service of one another for this evening. Brother Rick, pray for us tonight. All right, let's all get a book stand and turn to page eight, page 16, page 16. These are not my good glasses. <laughs>
Y'all pray for me tonight. My wife, I, I look back there at my wife, she's like, I'm like, yeah, I know what that means. It's kind of like a preacher got into the pulpit one day and he had a card on the, on the pulpit from his wife and it said K-I-S-S. And he thought, well, how sweet my wife put this little card up here and after the service he said I told her he said I told her I said I sure appreciate that little card she said well it didn't do any good he said well I, you seen it? it said kiss she said yeah I mean keep it short stupid <laughs> <laughs> so I see her back there blowing me kisses <laughs> and that ain't right amen I mean that's yeah, that's, that was the, yeah, that was for me. <laughs> Amen. But I look at that kind of like the, when the little, little boy said, Mama, what does that mean when the preacher looks at his watch? She said, nothing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. If you have your Bible tonight, I want to go again to the book of Acts, and I want to go back to chapter 4 tonight. And, uh, thankful that throughout the book of Acts we can see how much of a difference the Holy Ghost made in the lives of believers. Can you imagine what you and I would be like tonight if it wasn't for the Holy Ghost that lived within us? Uh, I, I would just, it would be awful, wouldn't it? I mean, uh, we would be almost like we were lost all over again. I'm thankful that when you're saved, the Spirit of God indwells you. God uh, regenerates you through the power of the Holy Ghost and uh, redeems us, changes us. And uh, I'm thankful for all that he does. And uh, tonight I want us to uh, look in a different direction kindly. And uh, in chapter number 4, and uh, I want to begin reading in verse number 31. And the Bible says, And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and of one soul. Neither said any of them that all of the things which he possessed was his own, but they had all things common. Of course, that shows us, the scripture tells us that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is unity. And the Bible said that when they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, then uh, they had all things common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked, for as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, 
having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege to be back in the house of the Lord. Thank you, God, for the good day you've given us. Thank you, Lord, for the service this morning, the Sunday school hour. Lord, thank you for all your blessings on this wonderful Lord's day. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege now we have just to open your word, Father, and I pray that uh, the Spirit of God would anoint us and help us to preach and, uh, Lord, to deliver the message tonight that you would have us to bring. I pray, Lord, that you bless your people, encourage their hearts, help us, Lord, to live our lives, that our lives will count for Christ. Lord, that we can win some precious soul to the Lord. Father, may you bless your people. Touch again, Lord, the many that are sick in our church. God, touch them and make them well, Father. We thank you that uh, you are the great physician. There is nothing in, that you cannot do, Lord, in a person's life. We pray, Father, according to your will, God, that you would touch these, uh, Lord, that are sick this evening. God bless your people. Help us tonight, and we'll thank you for all that you do, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach tonight <clears throat> from these verses, and I want to look at a few other verses quickly tonight. I, I promise you, I, I won't... Uh, be here that long, amen, uh, but uh, I want you to look at verse number 36. The Bible says, and Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, who, which is interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus. Tonight I want to look at this man by the name of Barnabas, and I want us to see some things about this individual that I think that there are some things about his life that we could emulate and we could put in our lives uh, and uh, do the things that God allowed him to do. But uh, as all of us know, all of us, there's none of us perfect. Barnabas wasn't perfect. Paul wasn't perfect. Peter wasn't perfect. None of them were perfect. And uh, we all are not perfect. But thank God we can serve God. Amen. In our imperfections. I'm glad God, he knows that we're not perfect, but yet he chooses to use our lives if we will surrender our lives to them, amen? And as I said, this man is an example for us and a man who no doubt loved the Lord, uh, but we'll see something sad about his life uh, toward the end of the message. But if we see here uh, in Acts chapter four, the spirit of the church, Notice verse number 29 tells us that uh, the, the church was bold. Look at verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. And they were known uh, to be bold in the Lord. The church was unified. We read that in verse number 32 where they had all things uh, common. The church was generous. This church was generous. Look at verse number 34. Neither was any among them that lacked. I mean, they took care of one another. They helped each other. They loved each other and made sure that he, everybody had exactly what they needed. And they were compassionate. Amen. And uh, in verse number 35, uh, the Bible said, And they laid down the apost at the apostles' feet, and distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. And so we can see the good traits of what God is doing throughout uh, the, the early church. And then come to verse number 36, and we find a man by the name of Barnabas. Now I want you to notice, first of all, that he is a sincere man, a sincere man. He's a Levite. Uh, if you will, turn back to the book of Acts chapter number, uh, well, not, we're here already, amen. But uh, in the Old Testament, Levites uh, were not supposed to own land. And uh, through his example, we see uh, the disastrous failure of the Jewish faith. He also owned land in a foreign country, not in the promised land. And so, but he evidently decided that he would become that which God had called him to do by being a Levite and he sold the land that he had, and he brought that, that to the apostles and laid it down at their feet. He was a man that had a heart of sincerity to serve God and to do what was right before 
uh, the Lord. Then he's not only a sincere man, but he's a sympathetic man. Look, if you will, back uh, over in the book of Acts chapter number 9. Acts chapter number 9, just for a moment. Acts chapter 9 and verse number 26. And the Bible said, And when Saul uh, was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple. Of course, Paul had just, Saul had just got saved. They had heard how he had uh, hauled people to prison. He consented to the death of Stephen. And so they didn't really believe that he was a true disciple. They just, they were afraid of him, the Bible says. And, uh, but verse number 27, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto them how he had seen the Lord in the way and that he had spoken to him and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. Amen. And so Barnabas here is a man that has compassion. He's sympathetic. And so Saul had come to Jerusalem and his reputation uh, preceded him uh, from being uh, one of the most ruthless Pharisees of that day. And so everybody was afraid of him. He, he watched the stoning of Stephen in chapter 7. He was a chief persecutor of the church, amen. He made havoc of the church. No doubt that's the reason. They were afraid of him. They, uh, they were kind of cautious about it. But Barnabas, a man of the sincerity of serving God and compassion that he wanted to help the man of God, uh, he did so, amen. And uh, so he, we see his conversion, uh, Paul's conversion in chapter 9, verses 3 through 19. We see his seeking in verse number 26. We see his rejection in verse 26. But Barnabas took him in. Barnabas began to try to help him. Boy, it's a blessing to have people uh, that'll try to help you, amen? People that'll be there for you, to help you, encourage you, and try to lead you in the right way and do the right thing. And that's exactly what uh, Barnabas was doing uh, to this new convert uh, by the name of Saul. And he was bringing him in, amen? Now, but Barnabas, the Bible said, took him. I like that in verse number 27, but Barnabas. Thank God for Barnabas, amen. What would have happened? Would there have been somebody else that would have taken Paul in and introduced him to the disciples? Uh, well, we find that James the Just, the brother of the Lord, chief elder of the Jerusalem church, wanting nothing to do with Saul. Uh, Peter, the great preacher on the day of Pentecost, wanting nothing to do with Saul. John the Beloved, the apostle of love, wanted nothing to do with Saul. Andrew, who was always introducing people to Christ and had that rare gift for seeking out those who needed to know Christ, wanted nothing to do with Saul. Thomas, unless he could have positive, irrefutable, solid material proof of Saul's salvation, uh, well, he wanted nothing whatsoever uh, to do uh, with him uh, but Barnabas, thank God. Uh, but Barnabas uh, was there to help him. Barnabas was there to, to be a help to him. Thank God there's some things that we can learn from Barnabas. Hey, we need to help others. We need to help people when they're newly in the faith and uh, when they come in. They don't understand everything that we do. Amen. We have visitors that come to our church. Thank God for the uh, new families and faces that are coming. They don't know everything like me and you do. That's why they need somebody to help them, be an encouragement uh, to them. Amen? And so that's where Barnabas came in. And so Barnabas, thank God, was a blessing uh, uh, to the Apostle Paul before he became the Apostle Paul. He was a sincere man. He was a sympathetic man. But notice he was a spiritual man also. Look with me, if you will, in Acts chapter number 11. We're talking about Barnabas. Acts chapter number 11 and verse number 20. And the Bible says, And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which when they were come to Antioch, spake unto the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. And the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. Then tidings of these things came into the ears of the church, which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas. 
Wasn't that amazing? Here's a man that, that uh, has just given his life and, and given his heart, given his all seemingly to the Lord. And here the Bible said, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch who when he came he had seen the grace of God and was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord for he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith and much people was added unto the Lord then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul and when he had found him he brought him into Antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Here's a man by the name of Barnabas. Barnabas is sent there to the church. Barnabas is there to be a help to those folk at Antioch. And then he goes and gets Paul and brings him back, amen. And as he gets there, and when they come back, they stay a whole year uh, they're assembling with the church, and they taught much people. And there were they called Christians uh, for the first time uh, at Antioch. Isn't it amazing that this man Barnabas was in that number? Barnabas, a man with a sincerity, a man that was sympathetic. And here he's a spiritual man, amen? And the Bible said when he came, he saw the grace of God. He saw what the grace of God had done in people's lives. And the Bible said he was glad. And he began to exhort them all that with purpose of heart they should cleave unto the Lord. Amen. Well, that's the kind of folks we need. We need some Barnabases that will come up and say, just keep serving God. Don't quit now. We're too close to home. Uh, don't give up now. Oh, the battle may be a little rough, but hey, the grace of God is sufficient. Amen. And so he was a spiritual man. He was glad about spiritual things. I like to see people get saved. I like to see people as they're growing. I love to see things happen. And the Bible said he was a good man. Amen. The Bible said that, verse 24, for he was a good man. <laughs> we need some good men. And I'm thankful for we got good men. I thank God for every good man we've got in our church. Amen. And we have a bunch of them. I praise God for them. And, uh, and some of them are here tonight, matter of fact. Amen. But Barnabas, thank God, he was a spiritual man. But then he was a sensible man. Look at chapter 11 again. Verse 25. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. And when he had found him, he brought him to Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Here's a sensible man. The work was growing. And as it grew, Barnabas needed help. What would he do? Who should he go to? Isn't it amazing that he went to Saul? The man that everybody else was afraid of. The man that everybody else wasn't sure, you know, I've, we've heard about this guy. You know, he's, we know what he has done in the past. Hey, how many of y'all, when you got saved, God forgave your past? How many of you? Some of you, all of you? Well, if you're saved, God forgave your past. Well, guess what God did for Saul? He forgave his past. Amen. Hey, all of us has got a past. And uh, I'll tell you, most of us, uh, our past is not a, a pretty picture that we paint. But thank God that's been forgiven. And Saul had been forgiven. And I'm glad Barnabas was spiritual enough to understand God had saved him and God had called him and God had forgave him. He wasn't the same man that he used to be. And so when Barnabas needed help, he goes to Tarsus to seek out Saul, amen? Oh, my. Isn't it amazing that he didn't go to some of the others, but he went to Saul. Uh, no doubt his mind ran down the whole list. Well, let's see. Let me think about this. What about Peter? No. He's too impulsive. Never know what he might do. What about James? No, he's too rigid. He's, 
What about Thomas? Nah. Thomas, he's too skeptical. He, he doubted, you know. Uh, what about John? John was so emotional. Uh, what about Philip? He's no longer in Jerusalem. And then, of course, Stephen was dead because they had stoned him to death. And so he went and found Saul. Man, isn't that amazing? God, God used one of the worst people that were persecuting the church to do the most for the church. Amen. I heard a preacher say one time whenever he uh, went to uh, preach a meeting, he always asked the preacher, who's the meanest man in town? I want to go see him. Amen. How many of us want to go see the meanest man in town? But he thought, man, if I can get the meanest man in town saved, that he, we could probably get a lot of other folks saved. And maybe he thought, hey, Saul, if there's anybody that God has saved that has made a complete turnaround, it's him. And so he goes to Saul, amen. And Saul became Paul, a proven man. I'm thankful for Barnabas and what he was doing and how he was allowing God to use him and he, he even helped the apostle Paul. But not only that, but he was a surrendered man, if you will. Look at chapter number 13. Chapter 13. He was a surrendered man. Chapter 13, verse number 1. Now there were in the church that was in Antioch certain prophets and teachers. Look whose name first. Barnabas. As Barnabas... Simeon that was called Niger, Lucius of Serene, Manon, which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. <laughs> now, I know a little bit about Saul. I don't know a whole lot about some of the others there. But isn't it amazing that Barnabas' his name is mentioned first? And the Bible said, And as they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John to their minister. And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar-Jesus, which was with the deputy of the country, Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul and desired to hear the word of God. But Elimus, the sorcerer, for so his name by interpretation, withstood them seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Then Saul, who is also called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him and said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil. Well, I believe next Sunday, that's what I'm going to preach. Thou child of the devil. <laughs> Amen. I mean, praise God. You talking about bold. I mean, he looks at him. He fastened his eyes on him. And this is what he said to him. Now, he's not preaching to a congregation. He's talking to a man. Amen. <laughs> oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief. Thou child of the devil. Thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness, and he went about seeking some to lead him by the hand. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. I mean, praise God. Uh, they were there getting the job done, amen? And we seek Barnabas and Saul. 
or Paul now as he's called in this chapter, and God sent them there. God used them there. The Bible said they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And of course, they had opposition while they were there. And we can see that Barnabas was a sound man. False teaching was being spread in Jerusalem by men from Judea. And false teaching and corruption is always trying to creep in. Amen. If we're not careful, that's why we need to study the Word of God. That's why we need to know the Word of God so that nobody can come in and slip something in that's not right. Amen. And uh, so we've had that happen a couple of times since I've been here. People come in and they're, they're starting to spew out their little ideologies about what they believe. Hey, I don't care what you believe. If it don't come from this Bible, it doesn't belong in the house of God. Amen. Jude said that. He said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered to the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And but thank God Barnabas and Paul, thank God they withstood this sorcerer and put him in his place. Amen. And Paul said, you're going to be blind. And all of a sudden, see, the mist came. And he was uh, trying to find somebody to lead him around. Why? He was blind. Amen. And I'm glad Barnabas was a sound man. He knew the truth. And he was sound in his doctrine. Notice something else quickly. Barnabas was a separated man. Look at Acts chapter 15. Don't get excited. I'm almost done. We're not going to go through the whole book. Acts 15. Look at verse number 36. Talks about Barnabas. And some days after Paul said unto Barnabas, Let us go again to visit our brethren, in every city where we have preached the word of the Lord and see how they do. And Barnabas determined to take with him John, whose surname was Mark. But Paul thought not good to take him with them, who departed from them from Pamphylia and went not with them to the work. And the contention was so sharp between them that they departed asunder one from the other, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed unto Cyprus. And Paul chose Silas and departed, being recommended by the brethren to the grace of God. Amen. And so here we find a separated man. The time came when Paul and Barnabas parted ways. And like most separations like this, many people take sides. Who was right? Well, I, no doubt both had good intentions. But we see in the last thing I want you to notice tonight that Barnabas, what he chose, leads us to believe what Paul wanted to do was the correct way. Paul just did not want to take John Mark with him, and, but Barnabas did. And so because of that, they separated. And they went their separate ways. And this is where I close tonight. Barnabas, all the good things Barnabas has done. I mean, I, I believe he's, he's saved. I believe he loved God. God used him in a great way. He's full of the Holy Ghost. I mean, things were good. I mean, God used him. But he made a mistake. And he became a swayed man. He allowed something to change his direction. Somebody said one time, it's not how you start, but it's how you finish. And Barnabas didn't finish well. He was a swayed man. You can read it. I don't have time to read it tonight. But you go to Galatians chapter 2, read verses 1 through 13. And I'll tell you a little bit about Barnabas. It was a sad ending 
after all that God had allowed Barnabas to do in the ministry, the introduction of Paul to the apostles, the starting of churches, the correcting of false teachers, the training of new believers. I mean, God used him in a great way. But he is swayed in the wrong direction. And this is the last that we hear of Barnabas. You see, we've got to be careful to make sure we're doing exactly what God wants us to do or it could cause a real problem for us later on. And this is the last that we hear of Barnabas, Galatians chapter 2. The lesson is to be learned that God desires our sincerity. And those who make a difference are those with compassion like Barnabas had. Know who to turn to when we need help. Of course, first and foremost is to the Lord. And then turn to those that God has put in our lives to help us. Amen. And we are to study ourselves to show ourselves approved unto God. You say, preacher, why should we do that? Because here's the problem. 2 Timothy 4, 3 said, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Titus 1, 9 says, Holding fast the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Titus 2, 1, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. We can learn we need to be careful of the company that we keep. Amen. We saw this morning that when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they, they perceived that they were unlearned ignorant men, but they took knowledge of them they'd been with Jesus. Be careful the company you keep. And sometimes even people that are saved that are not walking in the right direction, that could be detrimental to your spiritual life. If they've gotten away from God, it might be best not to follow them too closely. Amen. Find somebody that's on fire for God. Find somebody that loves God and, and hang with them. Amen. That wants to serve the Lord. Remember, in the life of Barnabas, even a great Christian can be swayed. Over the years since I've been saved, I have heard of several preachers, and it's sad. Whenever you hear a preacher that goes off on the wrong end, that's sad, it's heartbreaking. I've heard preacher, we heard a preacher one time, and I, I'm going to close we had a preacher one time, we was at a camp meeting. This guy preached. I'm telling you, it was almost like heaven came down. I mean, I mean, just like heaven. I mean, there was probably 3,500 people at the meeting, and I believe almost all 3,500 were trying to get around the altar. I mean, it was just, I mean, God just moved in miraculously. And then it wasn't but a month or so down the road, we heard some very, very disturbing news that what this preacher was doing, and it ruined it. And I, I was just a young preacher then. I was like, well, how, how can God touch him and God use him to reach so many people? But it really wasn't him. It was the word of God and the spirit of God. Amen. Again, it goes back, none of us are perfect, but yet what he was doing, I mean, he, he ended up losing his church. He lost, I mean, it ruined him. It was bad. I'm not going to tell you what it was because it was bad. I, I don't understand all those things. But even good men, Christian men, can be swayed if we're not careful. Amen. God, help us tonight. Father, thank you for the word of God and God, I pray you'd help me, help my life, help me, God, to just keep my eyes focused upon Jesus. God, forgive me of my sins, cleanse my heart, God. 
As the psalmist cried, create within me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Lord, I want my life to count for the cause of Christ. I don't want to be swayed in the wrong direction. But Lord, I want to wholly follow you. I want to be led by the Holy Ghost. Oh, God, may you help us tonight. Bless your people. And we'll thank you for it. In